I'll record this as well. So this is chapter five, e-security. Um, comparatively, not a very tough topic. Um, it's more so general information. Now, when we talk about e-security, we're talking about personal data. So we're talking about that, obviously, when things go online, your name, your address, your phone number, email address, all these details, these, when they go online, they can obviously go into wrong hands. And, and obviously, this is where uh, it becomes risky because this could result in fraud, bullying, uh, blackmailing, right? So your personal information should not go into wrong hands. So obviously, when things go online, we have to be really careful about these particular things, right? There are obviously several guidelines available, uh, which you can obviously take into account, uh, such as having strong passwords. Um, um, you uh, encrypt the data, okay? Uh, you, there are ways that you can encrypt the data, okay? You know what, what, the, what the process of encryption is, okay? Encrypting means uh, turning your data into a form that cannot be read by someone unless and until you enter the key. Are you with me? You're with yeah. me? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. <clears throat> you can have a firewall installed. You know what a firewall is. A firewall does not allow any wrong thing coming inside your computer system. So because a firewall basically has is uh, your access control list. We call it an ACL. Access control list will have a list of all those latest uh, malwares, uh, ransomwares, adwares, whatever they are, uh, not to come into your computer system. So if they try to come, your firewall will not allow them to come. Then you have antivirus. And in case if, if some uh, malware does uh, reach into your system, uh, your antivirus is going to quarantine it or either to delete it if it's not disrupting the operating system files. You can make use of biometric devices, okay, uh, such as thumbprints, uh, okay, and retina scanning to make sure that uh, more security towards your system is maintained apart from username and passwords, okay, right? So obviously now these are very typical things. Um, do not open emails uh, from senders you don't know. I'll uh, check the URL. Uh, at times, URLs tend to look genuine, but they're not. Uh, for example, if we have ci.org.pk, it will be wrong because we don't have a domain by the name of .pk with CIE. It's only UK. Okay. Be cautious about uh, any 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 pictures or opinions that you post and you send to people. You should definitely be very careful about it. Remove the data about your location. If you are uh, um, obviously using some other system, uh, so you should not actually, frankly speaking, uh, Put your location everywhere. Do not be friends with people. Sir? Yes. Sir, I have a question. Yes, sure. But that is related to social media. That a, like if a person post, ki ji, uh, like just on Facebook pe ya Instagram pe stories laga dete about the location. Right. Sir, is it dangerous as well? It is. It is dangerous as well because it depends on um about who you. At times, if um, you. You and your, your information tends to be more secure, has to be more secure, then obviously you have to be a common man. What if someone uh, uh, trespasses and get into your social networking? Um, maybe, okay. <clears throat> uh, what if someone uh, views you, uh, your <laughs> to a friend's phone and the friend doesn't know about it what if someone hacks into your friend's um, social media account and uh, goes through your information so there, there could be lots of possibilities where obviously this could happen even you get my point you get my point right so obviously one one has to be very really careful about it okay so right did I answer your question Are you with me, Vita? Can you hear me? Um, can you hear me, Vita? Yes, can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me now? What happened? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So did I answer your question? You got it right. So yeah, set all 
privacy controls. You can hear me, right? Can I continue? Yes, sir, please. Okay. Report and block any suspicious users. If there is a suspicious user that you're not sure of, you should report it, okay? Uh, use nicknames or uh, obviously you can use nicknames in, in case of uh, uh, playing games and that this is what usually everyone does nowadays. You don't have to use your name. And maybe you are going into a, a form or something. Don't have to use your uh, proper name. You can use a nickname. If it's possible, you can use a VPN. Virtual private network can be used to uh, connect to other networks. It's if you want it to be very... Sir? Yes. Sir, yes. can it be dangerous? Like if you're installing a game and that game asks for your email and your account for <clears throat> permissions, right? Uh, it depends on how authentic... Uh, the, the game is we have to check credibility of the company who has developed that game uh, if the game is been developed um, by, by a random company that has no profound um, experience in that particular field and uh, that could be risky so you have to look at all these things okay so yes, <clears throat> yeah so I was just talking about VPN virtual private network is, is a very secure way because virtual private network uh, uses a, a software through which uh, um, you use a, a process known as tunneling. And through tunneling, what happens is no one can actually um, intercept between you and the other computer. So uh, this is what VPN is. And you know, there are lots of VPN softwares available that we can use. Okay, you might have heard of VPN before, have you? There, there, there are lots of VPN softwares available. Okay, then no, we sir, have, I haven't heard about VPN before. Yeah, we, we, VPN is, is, is a, we will discuss this later on again in detail as well. Okay. All right. How is personal data collected? Uh, phishing. Phishing basically uh, means that um, a form of a wrong website, like I just gave you an example, uh, cie.org.pk. So basically, you are linked to a website that is, that is not a, a genuine website. And let's say you enter your information. So obviously, your information goes to some other database. So phishing is when a wrong website, looking like original website, um, aims to fraud you, aims to take your information, and obviously this is what happens, okay? Sir, how we will confirm that the website we are using currently is authentic to, or not? You have to look at the URL, okay? For example... Like, is there any indication in URL like... Obviously, let's say if you go to facebook.com, you have to look at the spelling of Facebook. F -A if so, let's say if, if someone launches a website which is like face look, okay, look, mm -hmm. it's like the login page of Facebook. And if you don't read the URL, obviously, then you will be a victim of it. Now, you have to. So, can we say that the URL is a site pick, a red tab, that says this is a secure word? But again, that does not guarantee. Um, uh, you can buy domains that are HTTPS and that will still have a padlock. Yes, a padlock does help you uh, for your data to, to be transferred secure, but uh, it does not help totally in phishing. You get my point? Yes, sir. Anyone can purchase uh, facebook.com and use it for, for um, illegal means. Okay. So, yes, sir. Uh, uh, one of the example of phishing basically was PayPal. Uh, uh, many, many years back, PayPal login page was made by someone and look, look, just looked like the, the original page of PayPal and people logged into it. Um, and obviously their, their credentials were stolen and uh, lots of financial, um, uh, and obviously people had to suffer because of it. This was, then after that, obviously they were, Lots of advances that came in, like like you just said, um, the padlock HTTPS became uh, one of the most prominent thing that you have to use HTTPS, not HTTP, uh, to launch a website. Okay, so uh, then how to recognize? I just told you that um, um, how to do for phishing. Do not open email that is not from a sender. Lich companies will uh, never ask for your personal data. Obviously, they they never do that. Okay, uh, look at um, the accuracy of the uh, email that's coming. Uh, you obviously, dear member, okay? So you have to look at that how, so you have to find out if someone is addressing you in an unprofessional way, that could also be a reason. So you have to be always attentive, okay? 
Legit com- uh, companies will always send you data uh, through their company's email address. Okay, like, like like I just told you right now. If you see user at the PayPal, P A double L. Actually, it was this. So when there's a spelling mistake, you have to be careful about the URL, then you have to be careful about the email addresses both. This is wrong and this is correct, right? So grammatical errors should not be there. You should be careful about that, okay? And always look at the URL, right? Smishing basically means is when someone tries to defraud you through an SMS. Uh, very common nowadays, you get an SMS and SMS basically will have a link and it will or call someone. So smishing is when someone tries to defraud fraud you basically through an SMS, okay? Very simple thing. Wishing basically is uh, when someone calls you, you get a phone call from someone behaving that they're from a bank and they will be taking information regarding your bank account. They will try to ask you information about your bank details. Like bank. fake calls from the bank. Exactly. So this is this comes under the category of wishing basically, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Obviously, it's a very typical thing. Don't give your pin and information. So this is the same thing that uh, Zain Bhai was telling us the other day that uh-huh. he received the call and uh, he said that you have called a wrong person. <laughs> yes, very wrong person, exactly. <laughs> so it's becoming very typical thing nowadays. Uh, farming, on the other hand, basically means is that you... Um, has have you have a malicious code installed or someone sends you malicious code and when and, and that gets installed on your computer and it, it directs you to uh, a fake website okay forming so this actually happens is through a dna cache poisoning now d- domain name server basically means let me explain you this concept uh domain name server are those servers that have the address of the website that you're visiting. When you type mrsime.com, at the back you have is a particular IP address, okay? So what if someone does is that um, instead of taking you to my hosting server, okay, uh, the domain name server is basically hacked and domain name server is poisoned in such a way that domain name server directs you to a wrong hosting. So what's happening, obviously we trust our DNS, uh, we, we, we trust our server where we host our website. But if someone does is that they hack the DNS, then obviously uh, you will be a victim of it because you won't know. They, they, this process through which your, your, your domain name server is poisoned is known as DNS cache poisoning. I hope you got my point. Yes, sir. Right? This, there obviously there are multiple ways that people will... So, um, right. How to prevent farming? We uh, the same, same, same steps. Install a firewall. Okay, uh, start anti-virus program. Uh, be aware that using a Wi-Fi connection in public areas. Be be careful about that. Uh, malware is a generic term. Okay, um, malware consists of viruses, trojan worms. Let's discuss all of them one by one. So, virus basically is a piece of code that is there to disrupt the normal functioning of your computer system. Okay, um, so a, a virus uh, will lay either dormant until an action is performed. When you click on open up a document or do something, the virus is activated. It can slow down, it can uh, multiply files and make your system much more slower. Okay, minimizing the risk of viruses, again, the same thing. Antivirus programs, install firewalls. Okay, so uh, update your antivirus, install the firewall. You see, there's a lot of repetition over here. <clears throat> right. Then we have Trojan horse. You m- might have heard the tr- the Troy, the Trojan, the Trojan. Trojan basically is when... Yes, sir, I've heard it previously. That that's a type of a virus. That resides within a software. So, And when you open the software, it comes out. Okay? Just like there was this uh, horse. Remember the Troy? It came, the name came from there. So... Inside the horse, uh, there were soldiers and they came out. Same way, uh, they, within programs, you have viruses. And when you open up like MS Word or Excel file, these uh, viruses, they come out. So it's known as your Trojan horse. So how can you minimize the risk of Trojan? Or- what, do, what do they do after coming out? Obviously, the, the, the virus will come out and it will start uh, disrupting the normal function of your system. 
slow it down, replicate itself. Okay, delete your important files. And most important, it will just slow down your computer to a lot of extent, you can't use it. Okay, it depends on what the virus tends to do. Okay, there could be spyware inside it. A spyware that will try to take information out of the system. Okay, there could a, a, yes, a Trojan could also have his ransomware. A ransomware is I was a victim of it as well. Um, it installs on your computer and the person will ask you for money. And if you pay them money, then obviously, if they are uh, fair, although how can it fair, um, then they will uh, de, uh, make your system normal again. So all your files will be um, encrypted in such a way that you will not be able to... So that's, that, that's a ransomware, okay? So what, worm basically means is that worm will replicates itself. Um, so if you have a folder, you will have thousands and hundreds <coughs> of that folder. That's a worm. So worm basically um, do is they replicate themselves a lot. And uh, they usually clog the network. They they um, do not allow the computers and the networks uh, to, to uh, have their full bandwidth to process fully. Okay. So this is what worms are. So replication is the main, main, main thing. They keep on replicating. So if you have a file of 5 MB, a worm will basically make hundreds of copies of this 5 MB. So you, you will not have any hard, hard disk space. You have to keep on deleting, but you just can't keep on deleting. It is very, very nuisance. So an antivirus uh, software uh, can normally check for worms. Uh, you, you have to do regular scanning for that. You have to update your antivirus. Uh, only that is the way you can actually get rid of it. Spyware uh, <clears throat> obviously means that uh, someone is trying to get your personal information out. So there, uh, spyware is a key logging software. Key logger software basically means is that um, I can install a software on your computer and when you type in the password, the software will know what keys you've typed in and I get to know what your password is. So key logging softwares are there to get your username and the password. So whatever you type, I am getting to know what you're typing. Okay, that's what spyware softwares do. Okay, uh, they, 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 they look for uh, in, uh, uh, actions that you perform. They look for uh, information that you're sharing. They look for um, the, the information that you're entering. Okay, they, are, they look for all this. Okay, uh, obviously they're uh, minimizing again, 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 the same things. You have to basically um, download uh, an antivirus software for that. Okay. Do not click on pop ads, um, don't do that. Okay, <clears throat> always read small print when kissing to So always obviously uh, read everything before you click somewhere. That's the most important thing. Okay, then we have is adware. Adware obviously you get advertisements at times that ask you to click, but so obviously uh, always read where. It, so mostly this happens is whenever you're downloading something, you click on something, but that that's not what you want to download. You have to download something else. So always see that you're downloading a legitimate thing. Um, uh, the best way is you click on the link and below down there, see in the footer that where does, where is it, where is it taking you? Okay. Or, or before, or even if you click on download, your, your uh, antivirus software will uh, tell you, is it an, is it a authentic file or not? So there, there are lots of ways we can actually uh, get rid of adwords. Uh, okay. Now, rootkits are what? Rootkit basically are those small uh, softwares that basically get installed, and the they basically do is uh, they. So it gives the other person an administration administrative power over the victim's computer. How do you know? Sir, I've read it a little bit. Very good. Well, exactly. Well done. Administration, right? That's what the, that's the reason why rootkit the word is there. Rootkit because the main folder, as you said, very good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay. Um, and you know why am I skipping this? Because it's the same thing. How do you get rid of it? Uh, malicious bots are basically uh, malicious bots are used by cyber criminals in various uh, spams. Is is one of the example of it. Okay. So uh, uh, so in in, in in number of uh, times they, they will be repeated. So 
they will carry out simple and but repetitive tasks that's what sir they... what is a bot network a bot basically is 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 a, is a code that keeps on doing a, a step again and again okay such as getting your username and the passwords we call them malicious bots okay right chatterbots remember okay. chatterbots are what chatterbots uh, uh, are on sites that behave like humans and basically what they do is they try to interact with the, with the humans to get information out okay we call them chatterbots right and then what we have is ransomware i talked about ransomware before i told you what ransomware is sir is there any identification of chatterbox um chatter you you antiviruses will just treat them as a, as as an anti as a virus simple as that okay okay you virus it's the same thing is this just that the behaviors are different and you know, ransomware i talk about ransomware uh, again it's 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 a kind of virus yeah. it's used in a different way ransomware will try to do is it will try to take out uh, it will take out your your important information and it will encrypt it and that information of yours is very very important so what will happen is obviously you have to uh, if you want that back uh, that particular person will say okay you have to pay me this much only then i will decrypt your information so if your information is worth it then obviously and if you can't decrypt it yourself um you have to pay that person so it's very important that we um minimize the risk of ransomware okay um so it's, it's the same way that we we did with trojan horses uh for all these antiviruses and firewall is one of the best way to protect it as you can see okay uh dos denial of service attack do you remember what denial of service attack is what's dos attack remember should i explain ji sir please okay dos attack basically is denial of services um for example if you open up a uh, photoshop animate you open like 10 different softwares heavy softwares on your laptop for a while your laptop will not perform it it will just get halt jisko hum kehte hang ho gaya now basically this is an example of denial of service your processor is saying that i cannot perform okay now sir, what because happened? it is operating uh, sir because at the time computer is operating for too many heavy files Or exactly. for too many heavy softwares, so that's why it denies to offer us services. Absolutely. Now, just think of 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 a case yeah. that you you actually uh, are visiting a website, Mr. Sime dot com. Mr. Sime dot com can cater, let's say, um, maximum of five uh, hundred clients in a in in one second. That's the maximum I'm saying. Now, what happens is I make a uh, a virus, and this virus basically. I send a request to my web server one thousand times a second. It replicates itself and keeps on sending a request again and again. So ultimately, what happens is my server, where my website is, will say, um, "I cannot uh, serve you because I already have lots of requests coming in." So that basically means denial of service. The server will say, "I cannot serve you because already." there are lots of uh, services i have to perform but the server doesn't know those uh, services that i am been asked are actually not legitimate services they are fake okay so when is when the website yes, is is not allowed to perform its duty its job it is comes a comes to denial of service you get my point yes sir okay so See, uh, wasn't a lengthy chapter. Uh, I would like you to, I would surely like you to go through it. Okay. Um, um, honestly speaking, um, chapter one, chapter two, chapter four, and chapter five. I want you to go through these chapters, and please do it any time you have any problem with these. Okay. Yes, sir. You see, theory will not take time, inshallah. And I will. with you the reason why i'm doing theory right now is uh, sorry let me stop it 